What path might you take in your quest for total health? Optimum health that encompasses mind, body, and spirit. So come along now with Olivia Newton-John, Judy Brooks, and Roy Walkenhorst on Healing Quest. Hello everyone, thanks for joining us. Today we're going to explore a very subtle but very powerful world. It's the world of energy medicine and some parts of that world you've probably heard about. But I can pretty much guarantee you that in at least one case we'll be showing you something today you've never seen before. We'll also see how tiny needles are making big dreams come true. Within a year I was pregnant with Gabriel. In the Cookus Interruptus kitchen so, we'll uh, see a very different kind of energy. Are... So I'm going to toss this all together just with my hands here. Can I borrow your car keys? And our healing moment reveals the beauty of fall leaves. So join us now as we head to the frontiers of integrative health and well-being on Healing Quest. Broadcast of this program made possible by... So True, makers of So True Sun Repair. Clinically shown to repair skin cell damage due to UV exposure. So True Sun Repair, designed to support natural DNA repair and proud to support Healing Quest on public television. The American Botanical Council provides science-based herbal information at herbalgram.org. Resveratrol from Reservage, the powerful antioxidant with organic grapes grown in century-old vineyards in France, formulated to support cellular and heart health, as well as healthy aging. More information online are at 1-800-553-1896. talk about energy medicine we're talking about helping someone heal by barely touching them or in some cases not touching them at all that's one reason why energy medicine attracts so much skepticism but as Judy discovered that very light touch is starting to have a very real impact energy medicine energy therapy um, it, it's working in the um, energy field the magnetic energy field of the patient um, sometimes it's called the biofield. Beth Wright connected with this energy medicine when she coordinated the Healing Touch program at Greenwich Hospital in the Connecticut suburbs northeast of Manhattan. What the Healing Touch does is it subtly influences that energy field. And in doing so, that it's a subtle shift, but it has a healing effect and on a physical level as well. Healing touch is described as a therapy that influences the patient's energy system, affecting physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual health and healing. The goal is to restore harmony and balance, promoting self-healing. Dr. Stephen Jones was director of outpatient medicine when Healing Touch was first proposed at Greenwich Hospital. He admits to being somewhat skeptical at first, but he told me Healing Touch has proven its value. We certainly see that people respond better to the standard treatments they have, whether it's pain management, chemotherapy, regular medications, and they seem to relax more in terms of their services, whether it's preoperative, postoperative. Laura Sorgenfree told me she was very happy with her healing touch experience. And there was throbbing in the hip when she was over on that side, and it's not throbbing now. So. Oh, how nice. Wonderful. So it's fine. I'll take it. If it's an hour or two hours or five hours, I'll take it. It generally takes oh. two years or more of training to become a certified Healing Touch practitioner. And so far, it's been taught to over 100,000 people worldwide. I'm very, very happy with it. And I think as we go into the future, we're going to see more and more of this and more benefits to our patients as well. Healing Touch has been endorsed by the American Holistic Nurses Association and is now part of patient care at more than 30 U.S. hospitals. That's right, and Healing Touch is not the only energy medicine that's making its way into hospitals and clinics. Acupuncture is also having a healing impact. Acupuncture is a system where stimulation of very specific points on the surface of the skin produces a predictable physiological effect in the body. Dr. Waterhouse is practicing the ancient art of acupuncture at one of the most advanced hospitals in the world on the campus of the University of California, Los Angeles. 
Through the centuries, Chinese acupuncturists identified hundreds of points at which a needle can help control the flow of energy. They don't necessarily go where the pain is, they go to the energy points that control it. Waterhouse says five to 15 treatments resolve many people's chronic problems, and sometimes it takes only one. I was a bit nervous, but Mike did a good job of calming down, and I used some of my biofeedback techniques. Nick's pain had been acute and debilitating, symptomatic of a disorder called fibromyalgia that can affect muscles and bones throughout the body. By the time we were finally able to get him in here, he was up to three and four shots of Demerol a day, plus muscle relaxants, and he had, he had literally lost any kind of life that he had had. Feels good, it feels like everything is let loose. Um, the muscle pain just goes away. We stand back and just the joy of watching him go outside to shoot hoops. It's just, it is, it's a completely different life now. It's wonderful to see acupuncture being used in the hospital to treat pain, mm -hmm. but it's also being used in many other ways as well. As a matter of fact, this energy medicine is helping with everything from addicts to infants. At a place called the Penn North Center in Baltimore's inner city, acupuncture is being used to help drug addicts find their way back to good health. Acu-detox is a process of using five needles in each ear that is, each needle is addressed to an organ and it's an emotional piece attached to each organ. Acupuncture as the first step of healing addiction is being used in similar programs across the country. The meditation, the Tai Chi, the life skills, the HIV education, the workouts, all of it is part of a system to help you overcome your challenge of drug use. Remember, drugs is not your problem. You the problem. In San Francisco, Angela Wu is helping her clients deal with another kind of problem. Regarding pregnancy, the doctor said that my chances of conceiving uh, were almost um, none, that I, you know, that my eggs were probably too old. But on the day we met 38-year-old Jody Friedman, she was just about to give birth. What had changed her discouraging prognosis was a series of treatments at Dr. Angela Wu's healing center. The wall in Dr. Wu's office sports a proud display of her accomplishments, her AccuBabies. She says they now number so many, she's lost count. Angela Wu is a doctor of oriental medicine and a healing Tao instructor. She's also one of a handful of acupuncturists in the U.S. who specialize in fertility. One of her biggest fans is opera singer Lisa Delon. At age 25, Lisa showed all the symptoms of fertility ending menopause. The National Institute of Health even asked her to donate her ovaries for study. When I called my gynecologist, she was really thinking that most probably my LH level was so elevated I had a false positive pregnancy test. And nine months later, I gave birth to a nine pound, two ounce, gorgeous little boy. Several years later, when we really hoped to have another child, I went back and saw Angela and started treatments again. So I really followed her protocol as religiously as I could, and within months I was pregnant with Isabella. Angela Wu says that once the mind believes a child can happen, she can help teach the body to follow along. She says the intent of both mother and father is essential. You are number one. That you as a uh, unit, it needs to come before that you invite the babies to come because the babies choose their parents. And from Germany has come an intriguing new form of acupuncture called color puncture. It's energy medicine with crystal wands instead of needles. It's based on the work of Peter Mandel, a German naturopath who found a way of tapping into the part of the brain that regulates the energy system in our bodies. We apply uh, specific crystals of particular colors to the skin and then the skin acts as a receptor for the light and uh, goes into the body and affects the brain and via its effect on the brain we have release of neurotransmitters that then regulate the energy system in the body. Brendan is being treated by Rosemary Bourne at her office in San Rafael, California. Rosemary is a doctor of oriental medicine and director of the Institute for Esogetic Color Puncture, USA. 
She's been treating Brendan for virtually his entire life to help him stay physically and neurologically healthy. I was initially introduced to color puncture by Rosemary. After Brendan was born, he had a very difficult labor, which resulted in a C-section. So Rosemary came to my home um, soon after we brought Brendan back from the hospital and gave him his first color puncture treatment as an infant. He was just uh, less than a week old. And um, she showed me how to do it, and then I continued with that. And I was very impressed by um, how calm Brendan was after the sessions, how much better he slept. Color puncture has been a part of Caroline Skippa's life for 16 years, from the time she was six years old. And I wasn't getting sick. Um, with these treatments, it just, it kept me all kind of on one level instead of, you know, you hear about kids that are having, getting colds and, you know, all types of sicknesses, and I, that never really happened to me. Dennis Telfer came to Rosemary for help in treating an injury he sustained while serving in Iraq. I was actually struck in the back of the head with a machine gun. Uh, it wasn't even in combat. It's just, I got hit in the head with it people moving equipment around. But it caused a neck injury. And so it was always stiff and hard to move about and so forth. I have doctors who would say, well, we can go in and cut this and cut that. I'm not a big fan of that. OK, so without invasive surgery, I've gotten my mobility back, and I've got the pain reduction, and uh, I'm a happy camper. Dennis says color puncture has also helped him deal with post-traumatic stress syndrome. During the therapy and through all the sessions I've had with Rosemary, you know, I don't get angry much anymore. Not like I used to, okay? It's just, it's a whole different thing now. Rosemary Bourne says color puncture can help treat both emotional and physical issues and be a great preventive tool as well. She says basic color puncture kits are available for home use. It's a therapy that its proponents say can help us stay healthy through every phase of our lives. Up next, Judy shows a form of energy medicine that I bet you've never seen before. Judy, every once in a while, you find something on your healing quest that is truly unique, and I think you've done it again. <laughs> Thank you, Olivia. I think you're talking about a form of energy healing that's coming to us from Italy. It's called Celtic Healing. Imagine that we have a central computer with all the programs software, the information, and this would be the remotes through which I can connect to everything that is stored in the central computer. The remote Asperide is holding is a Celtic wand, also known as the Stella Self. Asperity says this and the other selfie healing tools she uses tap into a deep wisdom. Wands have the ability of really in a guiding the hand and the intuition of the healer. You definitely feel a connection with the instrument. So you really feel that you're not holding a thing, but you're holding an expansion of your consciousness. The healing tools that Asperity employs were developed at a place called Domenhor in the Piedmont region of Italy, west of Milan. It's most famous for its underground temples created entirely by hand on five levels inside solid rock. Their creators say the temples also function as a laboratory where art, science, technology, and spirituality unite in search of new paths for human evolution. One of those new paths has led to the rediscovery of a healing discipline called Selfica. Selfica is a very ancient discipline that in Damanur over 40 years ago, we started to redevelop, rediscover and redevelop. And it is a discipline that makes it possible to build structures made of metal, like for instance, the bracelets I'm wearing, that can be programmed for specific functions. So we say the selfica are conduits for intelligent energies. Intelligent because they know how to interact with the human body and with the environment in a way that is beneficial for everybody that is in that space or that is receiving a healing. This is a sphere of self and it's a good example of how selfica are made. The main component here is metal. So we have copper, we have gold inside the sphere, and we also have alchemical liquids, specifically prepared liquids. You can see them here. This is a programmer. There are letters. This is like a keyboard. And according to what I type in, I can program the sphere cell for different functions. 
Art is also a critical component of selfie, not only in the underground temples in Dahmenhor, but also at a Northern California center that's recently been established. It's